After over a year of uploading things you don't know, well over 250 things and two hours and 40 something minutes worth of content, I have narrowed down the top 75 things you don't know in Destiny 2, starting with Cerberus is a weird gun. But a subtle detail that you might not have noticed about it is that when you ADS, you can actually see the next pattern of bullets it's going to spray while you're in the sights. You might not have even notice because of the amount of flash, but it's kind of neat little subtle detail. It is possible to give every gun in the game zero recoil. You just have to be in a particular spot. All you have to do is stand next to any portal and for some reason, all of your weapons become absolute laser beams. Here are a few of our favorites that we found while we were testing. Fun fact, the hive worms that you find in random places on places like the moon or Sabathun's throne world, or even sometimes they will pop out of random corpses of like Thrall and other hive. You can use them to, when you get a kill on them, to trigger kill clip like perks, including Rat King and even Ace of Spades. This is a literally free way to snag a buff mid combat and depending on the striker mission, this could be really helpful. Did you know that capturing zones in control or any game mode is more than just a good teammate thing to do? When you are standing in a zone when it's captured, you actually get significantly more super energy than you would if you were just spectating. It's worth doing since in PVP, a few seconds could mean the difference between a win or a loss. Did you know you can reset the fuse of a lasting impressions rocket? Strangely, whenever you shoot a lasting impressions rocket, the timer on the rocket will reset, which might be able to save your life in a pinch. But what's even stranger is that a ricochet round weapon will fling the rocket off its perch and in the general direction of the stray bullet. And yes, before you ask, this can kill your teammates if they are supremely unlucky. One subscriber commented that just like how we were able to stick a gathering storm into a sparrow, you can also do this with the ruinous effigies balls. I didn't believe them at first and after about 10 minutes of attempts, I was ready to give up, but sure enough, you can become the most confusing and hilarious roaming super to have ever existed if you can get this to happen. New ball. <laughs> oh, he oh, got, you it. got it. Oh, you got it. If you're a void warlock using the chaos accelerant aspect, make sure you don't ever hold your charge grenades for too long because as strange as it sounds, holding your grenade will almost completely prevent you from gaining super energy. It's very visible in mayhem, but this even applies to things like raid banners and rally points that refund your kit. Thankfully, you can still pick up orbs of light without any major issue. This is likely a runoff from the initial Chaos Accelerant's programming that would actually drain super energy in order to overcharge your grenades. Kind of an interesting relic of the past that never quite went away. Did you know about this neat trick that you can have a mobile super? Simply just have your friend stick a Gathering Storm pole into your sparrow and you can drive that into the heat of combat. Battlefield 4, C4 on ATV style. Did you know that you can stick grenades from the exotic grenade launcher Anarchy to a friendly glaive shield? Why would you ever want to do this? Two reasons. One, it's funny. And two, because every day we stray further from God's light. Remember, it's not about winning, it's about sending a message. Oh. 
one of my biggest pet peeves in Destiny 2 is this mechanic which destroys your kneecaps on high landings. For me, it just doesn't fit the fantasy of an indestructible space wizard when I lose my ability to fight for three seconds from a drop that's just slightly too high. But never fear, because as it turns out, this big movement in your aim is purely visual. If you take the time to lock your sights, drop and buckle your knees, and don't touch your mouse or your aim stick, your shot will stay exactly where you left it. It's still a pain to deal with and makes hard to hit moving targets, but at least you know how to deal with it. While it's hard to find, Bungie selects a default shader for each weapon and armor piece that you collect. This means that with a bit of digging, you can find shaders that change literally nothing about the armor. While this may seem like useless info, it means that if you find a piece of armor that you really love how it looks by default, it's possible to find its corresponding shader to make all of your armor match for that glorious drip. You probably throw grenades without a second thought, but did you know that grenades as well as a few other abilities are physical objects? This means that under some spectacular circumstances, you can stick a grenade to another grenade like a weird space magic anime. In our last spicy clip video, we had two Thunder Crashing Titans go head to head and one strangely survived with half health. Our comment section was filled with players giving theories as to what might have caused this and as it turns out, most of them are myths. The truth is having a higher FPS, as this commenter has said right here, will actually allow you to beat a lower FPS Titan every single time. Both Titans will trade when they're on unrestricted FPS, but as soon as we cap one of the Titans FPS, they lose. Interestingly, when both players are capped, it becomes a coin toss. My best guess is that the tick that triggers the damage isn't registering right away, allowing for a missed frame or two of damage. But hey, if you ever do get into a Thunder Crash v Thunder Crash battle, it literally could be who had the better gaming chair to decide who wins, i.e. who had the better setup. Player armor does not determine your hitbox. Even if you have a massive broken traveler ping pong ball on your noggin, your guardian can only be damaged from where your head would actually be or at least close to it thanks to aim assist and bullet magnetism. Bullets don't actually come out of the barrel of your gun. You might know that you can still shoot a target even though your gun logically would be shooting at a wall. This is because bullets only check for line of sight from the player's camera, which is often located in the head. In other words, your reticle. But you can do the inverse of this trick by having your gun stick around a corner even though your head is invisible. You won't be able to shoot a guardian even though your gun technically can Wait, what? So as we were testing this, it turns out that this rule is mostly true. Due to some unknown wizardry, rounds will actually hit targets, but only sometimes. We tested this further and found out that glaives and grenade abilities also follow the same rules of requiring actual line of sight from the point of the weapon. Glaives can't hit targets from your right side of a wall, and grenades won't be able to reach a target from the left side of a wall. Carrying the solar crystal around in Savathun's Spire is both dangerous and annoying, especially when you're being swarmed with adds you can't deal with too well. But if you're a hunter, it doesn't have to be that way. You see, the game counts kills with the crystal as a powered melee kill. So with the assassin's cowl, you can use the crystals as a source of infinite powered melee hits and thus infinite invisibility with the assassin's cowl, which will make lugging those massive things around much easier. Here's something cool that I didn't know, so maybe you didn't either. The kiosk at the tower can unlock new exotics and legacy gear for you, right? Pretty well known. Well, you might not know that you can also pull old legendary ornaments if you keep tabbing to the right of the old legendary weapons section. It allows you to finally complete that collection or get that ornament you maybe didn't get a while back. You can also continuously use your overhead spin to keep yourself in the air. It's expensive, but it could be a handy way to skip over a gap or jumping puzzle, especially with your two grapple abilities at your disposal. Powerful Attraction is a new armor mod added to the season. On paper, it's supposed to simply automatically collect any nearby orbs of power when you activate your class ability. 
personally, I find this to be mostly useless and needless. But this works for more than just orbs. When in Gambit, you can use this to collect all nearby motes, which in a game all about collecting and banking copious amounts of motes, this is very helpful. Capri's horn can kill players through walls. As strange as it may seem, this ugly thrall pelvis might be an amazing pick on certain PvP maps. If a wall is thin enough that placing a barricade into it will peek it through to the other side, this will allow you to unleash the wave of destruction that comes with the Kepri's horn. Stasis turrets have weird properties, like allowing things like kill clip to proc on them, something we showed off in earlier videos in this series. And sure enough, that stasis turret is your ticket to a free rope dart chain. There are certain perks in the game that require you to swap to them to trigger, like Eager Edge. But did you know that pulling out your ghost is counted as swapping weapons? This means that perks like Eager Edge, as mentioned, can easily be re-triggered by popping out your resurrection partner for just a few seconds. This also works for the seemingly endangered species of backup plan on fusion rifles. Did you know that if you get a kill with a sword that has a kill perk like Incandescent or Hatchling, they can still proc those perks even without ammo. It's pretty situational, but you never know when you might need that little bit of crowd control instead of traditional damage and traditional bullets. Overload works in PvP. Well, kind of. You see, Overload doesn't prevent health regeneration, but it does significantly slow down both your ability regen and your super regen. While in practice, this may only be an extra second or two for certain exotics like Caliban's Hand, which drastically increases the cooldown rate of your explosive knife while it's out, this can cripple that feedback loop, making weapons like Luminarchian, ironically, something like the Divinity even more deadly because of its inherent anti-overload champion traits. At least it doesn't prevent instant regen effects like Gambler's Dodge or other effects that give you a chunk rather than a slow burn. The entire length of a Well of Radiance blade can be damaged and thus destroyed. In an odd scenario where your opponent stabs their blade into a shallow ceiling, you can rather effectively ignore them and just start going to town and teach them this very lesson. If you are thinking that this is just a bit too niche to have any use, allow me to show you the clip that allowed me to figure out this fact. Titan barricades are strong, yes, if you've played PvP in the last patch you know this, but did you know how strong they actually are? Despite players being able to run through them, they are technically a line of sight blocker, meaning AoE damage like Thunder Crashes and Nova Bombs have to obey their protection. This simple fact allows you to use them to survive in insane and otherwise extremely lethal situations. This also works with stasis crystals and they can even block line of sights for themselves, providing even further protection. If you've ever wanted to humiliate a barricade spammer, this next trick is for you. Did you know that using a heavy grenade launcher with sticky grenades, you can stick your explosive ordinances onto enemy Titan barricades, turning them into a liability for the Titan to be near? Here's a quick one for you. If you're OCD like me, you will be relieved to know that you can press one button to mark all your recent discoveries in your collections as viewed, which is much less tedious. This next tech changed my life as an Ark Hunter. The Tempest Strike melee pulls you up into the air. This alone is not very interesting, but did you know that you can blink out of this melee ability to make yourself even harder to hit? 
why not take this a step further and combo this blink technique with the eager edge blink technique that we discussed in the last video for a massive burst of movement that is hard to predict off of your melee. Have you ever used heat rises on your solar warlock and wondered what's causing you to slowly lose altitude? I have heard some people say that PC players don't drop out of the sky because of frame rate or something. I have seen others say that you won't drop while you are pushing against a wall and many other things, but the truth is that you will stay in place so long as you don't move while you're in the air. Just simply staying still will prevent you from falling down, which makes sense both for bungees and counter designers as well as general aim stability while in the air and it's good to know. Stasis Glacier Grenades bounce you into the air. This is great for a quick bit of movement, but it's a shame because you can't use the crystals as a pop-up shield to kind of protect you and encase you. Or can you? What you might not know is that on Hunters, using the Touch of Winter aspect and the Renewal Grasp, the stasis crystal that forms from the dust field doesn't actually pop you up into the air like the Glacier Grenades, making it a great and viable strategy to just use it like a sort of cocoon. I can't believe I just figured this out. You probably know that tethering a well negates the well and makes it for an easy cleanup and punish. But did you know that you can shoot the well sword itself to deal damage to all targets inside, just like it was a tethered person. I didn't. Post down in the comments below, but what's your opinion on Threshers? Likely you share the common sentiment in that you hate them and wish that they were easier to deal with. Well, besides the latest nerfs making the missiles a slightly less of a death sentence, you might want to know that their missiles can actually be shot out of the air, making taking cover from them so much easier. Threaded Scepter creates a strand flavored clone of you where you dodged from. Everyone knows this by now, I hope. But did you know that these clones will also attract the aggro of certain targeting attacks and equipment? In particular, this will throw off a Nova Bomb and a few other key items. Take a look. Before we continue, remember to subscribe. Many of you watch a lot of our videos, but aren't actually subscribed, I appreciate it. Trying to get enough pieces of gear for your Iron Banner reputation bonus? Some of you may know that you can transmog your gear to get the bonus, just simply taking any normal piece of gear and giving it an Iron Banner transmog will do it. But did you know that if you take an already Iron Banner armor and apply another Iron Banner transmog on top of it, you will get two bonuses for one piece of armor, and this can be very handy. Emotes do in fact clip your character model through surfaces. This allows you to effectively phase through the laws of physics for some seriously niche dodges, or perhaps more amusingly, you can hug it out with an enemy player from the safety of cover. We tried for a while to get this to allow a player to clip through geometry entirely, but no luck. Regardless, this is a very strange find, and I am curious if there are any more emote trickery that you guys can let me know of in the comments. Are you getting bombarded by a Threadling build? It might surprise you that Arc Warlock with Arc Souls are the counter. Because just like how we showed things like proximity grenades targeting the Threadlings, your Arc Soul will do the same and pretty much provide free ad clear for you on the String Bean Mean Machines with no added effort. which is pretty handy if you ask me. Did you know that Antaeus Ward's shield is technically a flat buff that gets applied to the Titan granting immunity and a frontal reflection after sliding? Taking this a step further, with good timing and canceling that slide, you can use this window of invincibility with your thruster for 100% invincible thruster movement. 
It's a completely 100% safe approaching option. It's like freaking wave dashing from melee and I'm in love. Fun fact, supers are generated by dealing damage, taking damage and getting kills. Shocking info, I know. But did you know you generate more super energy by dealing damage with primary weapons? Even though the rate of fire of this trace rifle is significantly faster than my tap fired sweet business, you can see the sweet business is gaining energy far faster. probably know that damaging enemies with the fighting line increases its reload speed, but what isn't immediately obvious is that it also applies to any enemy objects as well. This includes ice walls, barricades, grenades, throwing knives, and even special items like Child of the Old Gods or Bleak Watcher turrets. We tried this with Blasting Impression rockets, but they seem to be coded differently than the others because it didn't work. But hey, the next time your opponent starts playing Fortnite with stasis crystals and barricades, grab a fighting line and ruin their day. Lightweight weapons are great because of their superb handling and free bonus to movement speed. But did you know that this bonus mobility is more than just for show? If you are a hunter, you might not know that this mobility bonus secretly helps your mobility stat. This means that by just simply holding a lightweight weapon, your dodges will come back faster. It might be worth going for just eight mobility instead of 10 if both weapons you're using are lightweight as it bumps it up by two stat points. Pretty neat. This trick has been around since the beta, yet I never see people use it or talking about it. Canceling your melee animation with a barricade or a rift mid-fight is a surefire way to win the battle on an unsuspecting opponent. It's worth keeping in mind that this won't work on melees with any type of bonus damage, but this can be extremely clutch if you absolutely need to win a melee fight and aren't afraid of dropping a few extra resources on it. Valiant Charge is a new perk that came with this season and it's pretty interesting. It allows you to gain an increased lunge distance after blocking an attack, which is great because of the Stronghold's up and coming buff. But did you know that this increase in lunge distance can be triggered from a friendly's healing grenade? It's very helpful if you want an initial boost of speed into the middle of a fight. Is an enemy warlock spamming bleak watcher turrets at you? Swap to a kill clip weapon because as odd as it sounds, these icy turrets can trigger kill clip style effects, but not any other kill based effects. We tried this with swashbuckler, Incandescence, Rampage, Harmony, and a few others, but no luck. Not even multi-kill clip works, which is a bit odd, but things like Ace of Spades Memento Mori triggers, Volt Shot triggers, I guarantee you that you did not know that stasis crystal explosions do not care about cover. In fact, as long as an enemy is within what would be its detonation and damage radius, it will damage them regardless of wall thickness and line of sight. Take a look.
did you know that you might have free loot waiting for you? As cable TV commercial as that may sound, for whatever reason, if you forgot to claim past season exotics, weapons, gear, anything, you can log into Bungie.net and claim them. Just go to the past season section. It's not much, but it might end up being a max rolled exotic armor piece. Who knows? It's just good to check. Burst Glide is generally the best option for Warlocks because of the free speed boost, but this isn't true when you're using Daybreak. We mentioned this in another video, but it's good enough to be on its own spot on this list. By running Strafe Glide and Warlock Surfing in Daybreak, you get an insane amount of speed at zero cost to your super energy, unlike using your Icarus Dash. It might be worth swapping to this in between rounds and trials of Osiris just to get that free bump in speed. I don't really have a good way to summarize this next one, but Water does weird things to grenade launchers. For some unknown reason, when you tap fire a grenade like you are seeing here, they seem to persist longer before detonating, even though on paper, nothing should be changed. What you're seeing here, I am not pressing or holding the grenade charge at all. It's a simple tap fire, which should have a set distance, but it's going further when it's in water. It's worth knowing this if you're a grenade launcher main and are playing on one of the many, many maps that feature groundwater. Have you ever needed a first person camera, but your gun model keeps getting in the way? Well, you might not know that even since the beta, if you hold a charged Warlock Void Grenade with a Chaos Accelerant immediately after throwing a Nova Bomb, your character will become the perfect cameraman. The only problem is that you'll have to deal with the slight humming of the grenade, but absolutely nothing will be on screen, assuming you turned off your HUD in the settings. The Astrocyte Verse is one of my favorite exotics of all time, and as you can imagine, I was stoked to see it get a buff but it looks like Bungie accidentally buffed more than they intended. Every Titan main will tell you this, but if you're new to the way of punch first, ask questions later, then you might not know that you can get a free boost to your Thunder Crash's speed just by using your Ballistic Slam before activating it. It's not a small bump either. This this has some serious firepower now. Headstone is a perk which generates a stasis crystal on precision headshot kills. As you can see here, its base damage in PvP is about 25, maybe 26 of the rounding, but did you know that the stasis crystal explosions will gain bonus damage if your weapon gains bonus damage? Even something as simple as standing in an empowering rift will give this a mild increase in its overall damage. And, at least for PvP, this is not tied to its archetype, as both this 150 scout and this rapid fire scout are both dealing the same amount of damage from that crystal detonation. Hunter's Whirlwind Guard is almost invincible. Almost. Despite it being able to do amazing stuff like Reflect a Winter's Wrath, Nova Bomb, and many other supers, it's weak to three weapons. Even though Trace Rifles do nothing against it, for some reason Devil's Ruin has no problem piercing right through the Whirlwind Guard and obliterating the Hunter on the other side. Taking this a step further, the Hunter is even more obliterated by the Chaos Reach, and it's an amazing counter to the super, just like the Devil's Ruin. Here's a quick one for new players. Did you know that the best way to avoid fall damage is to do a sword swipe right before hitting the ground? Once you get the timing down, it is very easy. And don't worry, this will work even if you don't have ammo. Here is a really neat trick I found recently. Using your super will cancel most other animations in the game, and with the Lightning Surge melee on Warlock, which is your slide melee, and a Chaos Reach, you can get this really cool teleporting Kamehameha effect. If you start to throw a weighted knife and realize you aren't going to be able to get your targets, you're gonna miss, or for whatever reason, you can cancel the throw animation by pressing your super button. This will override the throwing animation with an uncharged melee. You need to make sure your super isn't already charged, but if the situation is right, this is a great way to save a possible miss from happening. A 
unless you play highly aggressively in PvP, you might not know that you can actually start moving right before the fade to black screen ends. This can allow you to get into the best parts of the map ever so slightly faster than your enemy team, preventing them from setting up their sniper rifle firing squad. You can slightly control how high you jump by how long you press the jump button. The longer you press it, the higher you will jump with just your basic jump. And you can even tell just by looking at them who I'm telling to short hop and who I'm telling to full hop just by looking at the screen. If you use your grapple and then immediately cancel it with a uncharged melee, it's possible to have the game think that you used your grapple while only using 50% of its charge. Obviously, you don't get the full swing, but why would this be useful? Well, for hunters, Sir Tarachne's facade will give you free woven mail, or you could deal a small portion of damage to someone while using the foe tracers and get the damage buff from them for free. But even for all classes, weapons with demolitionists can reload your weapons quickly, or you can use the fragment that reloads your weapons and gives you a small bonus to airborne effectiveness upon using your grenade. The timing is a tad tight, but you will know when you've done it right. And from there, it's pretty easy to replicate. Certain shaders will interact or even enable a glowing effect on your armor. You probably knew this, but did you know that the chitin slate will outright disable the glowing effect on armors? I'm curious if there's any other shaders that have a unique glow property like the one seen here, so please let me know in the comments, I'm genuinely curious. Have you ever used an invisibility smoke bomb, or a well of radiance, or a phoenix dive? Well then, you might want to know that there's an animation cancelling glitch that can get these to happen just a little bit faster. By activating them right before you hit the ground while airborne, the game can't quite decide whether you're airborne or grounded, so it sort of just skips a step and casts the ability without the initial wind-up animation, giving you that slight, slight edge in combat. If you are a Strand Hunter main, this tip is extremely handy. You probably know that you can catch your rope dart, and you probably know that mistiming the catch will result in you just swinging your knife instead of grabbing the dart. Well, no longer. By setting your input method to have some means of using your charged melee, you can guarantee a catch on the rope dart because it will never try to swing the knife and will always prioritize trying to catch the dart. This is an extremely handy little tip if you aren't able to watch your knife's path but want to get that little bit of melee energy back anyway. Did you know that it's possible to duplicate your throwing hammers as a titan? If, for whatever reason, you end up losing your Tabasco-flavored Thor prop, simply stand right up next to another hammer titan and have them throw their hammer directly at you. If done correctly, both of you will end up with a full melee charge. If you're able to get a handful of hammer titans to do this, you can make one of your hammer bros into a hammer artillery. The Weave Walker aspect for Warlocks was given to us and then promptly disabled for who knows what reasons, which means that you might have missed some cool interactions that this now has now that it's back and working in PvE. While in We Walk, the Threadlings you generate can still be triggered to go and attack by simply dealing damage over time effects while inside that We Walk. The easiest method I have found is with the Wither Horde. This is a really powerful tool because you are basically an invincible Threadling turret. Give it a try. When was the last time you did a trick on your Sparrow? Well, besides looking stylish, when you do press the emote button while airborne on your rocket propelled steed, you will get a bit of thruster energy back. This can be helpful the next time you're in a dungeon or raid that uses your Sparrow as pressing the thruster button again while you're boosting gives you a slight boost of speed. So you can get a bit of a an infinite loop of thruster energy going, assuming you've got some ramps to do tricks off of. There are a few perks in the game that trigger on quote, powered melee kills. These obviously mean that you get a kill with your melee ability when it's fully charged, but for Titans, you have a lot more ways to trigger these perks.
This one is a quick one for new players. Pressing ADS when you are crouched behind cover will allow you to peek over it. You need to be close enough to the cover so that you're basically pushing your gun into it, and obviously it needs to be about head level while you're crouched. This will also work with Titan's Rally Barricade. It's a good thing to remember if you need to do a bit of peek shotting to keep yourself safe. Thunderclap is getting a bit of love next season with some exotic updates, so here is something worth knowing for you Titan mains out there, especially if you're like me and love the idea of a Thunderclap one punch. You can safely charge up your Thunderclap behind the safety of your barricade, then when you release, your Guardian will slightly step outside of its cover in order to finish the melee attack, making locking down an area much safer and much easier. Everyone knows matching a damage type to a shield does more damage and causes an explosion when it breaks. But if you are a newer player, you might not know that your kinetic weapon will deal bonus damage when shooting an unshielded combatant by about 10%. This gives you a reason to swap back to your kinetic weapon after breaking their shield for an even quicker cleanup as that damage bonus is the freest thing you will ever see. Just like all other enemies, Tormentors are susceptible to stuns and with the Tractor Cannon and a partner, you can bully the Tormentors and take their lunch money. have a lot of enhancement prisms but not a lot of enhancement cores me neither but a few of my friends actually did and this was the trick they used to convert enhancement prisms into the cores simply go to your collections and reacquire some blue armor from the leveling section and upgrade it to the eighth tier this will be the tier that will require you to actually spend an enhancement prism and then dismantle it and voila you've effectively purchased cores for the price of one enhancement did you know that for both of your basic hunter dodges you can cancel them immediately into a super it sounds basic, but because the super has such a high priority almost every other animation in the game, this can be extremely useful if you pair this with certain abilities and certain exotics. Fun fact, sticking a target with the Wither Horde makes the game treat them as if they were a taken enemy. This may seem pointless as you're going to shoot them in the face regardless, but this means that weapons like Malfeasance and Wish Ender actually deal a slight amount of bonus damage from their exotic perks to targets that are stuck by the Wither Horde Blast. Eager Edge works even if you don't have ammo. This is mostly a pointless bit of knowledge unless you are a blink user. Then this becomes a godsend for quickly changing your momentum for a free boost of speed. Suddenly, long gaps become much easier to cross with practice timing. Simply whip out the Eager Edge sword, give it a single swipe, and then blink, and your horizontal momentum will carry over. I use this all the time as a Blink Warlock main. The only bummer is that you can't use this in competitive and trials where swords are disabled unless you have ammo. You made it to the end of the video. Do you have anything that you remember from other videos that didn't make it on this list that you think should? Do you think we should try to find more stuff to continue? I feel like we've just about tapped damn near everything out. Regardless, subscribe, bless your faces, and deuces.